Hello, and welcome again to another exciting story of the of our Disney princess tales of courage and kindness. We are going to be discussing about Aurora's story now, and how she shows courage and kindness. With me, as you can see, is my lovely sidekick, Buddy. He's going to be enjoying the story with us, and just so you know... Our other friends may be joining us here pretty soon as well, so don't be alarmed. And let's read what or Aurora does, shall we? When Princess Aurora was born, the evil fairy Maleficent placed a curse on her. To protect the young princess, King Stephen and the Queen sent her to the forest to be raised by the three good fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather. After Aurora and Prince Philip broke the curse by defeating Maleficent, they went to live at the castle. But Aurora still calls the fairy's cottage her second home and visits often. Our story is called The Missing Wands, written by Aaron Feligant and illustrated by Liam Brazier. Hello, Princess Aurora knocked sharply on the door of the thatched roof cottage. Oh, and before I continue, let's not forget, I may be asking you a question about what you show of courage and kindness. So if you want to leave, leave your answer, make sure you click on the comment and, re and leave your message. Thank you. Hello, Princess Aurora knocked sharply on the door of the thatched roof cottage. She had traveled all the way from the castle to visit the three good fairies, but she'd been knocking for several minutes. Were they even home? The front door suddenly flew open. As Flora burst out, her red hat slipped sideways over her gray curls. Thank goodness you're here, she cried. Aurora placed a comforting hand on the fairy's shoulder. Flora, what's wrong? Has something happened? Merriweather pushed past Flora. Someone has stolen our wands, she announced, her round face flushed with anger. When we find them, I'll turn that thief into a warty old toad. Now, now, Merryweather, said Fauna, following close behind. I'm sure the wands weren't stolen, but her brow was wrinkled with worry. Flora paced the cobblestone walk. We've looked everywhere. Whatever will we do without our magic? Merryweather sucked in her breath. How will we protect ourselves from evil or spread happiness? asked Fauna. How will we fly, said Merriweather, throwing her arms wide, or clean, or even cook? Fauna's face lit up. Maybe I could do the cooking, she suggested. Merriweather sighed. I think I just lost my appetite. Don't worry, said Aurora, gathering the fairies around her. I'll help you look for your wands, and we won't need magic to find them. You lived for many years without your magic when you were keeping me safe from Maleficent. Aurora could scarcely say the name of the evil fairy who had placed a curse on her long, be on her long before. To protect Aurora, the good fairies had hidden her in that very cottage and raised her for 16 years. During that time, they had vowed not to use their magic to avoid calling attention to their whereabouts. Fauna's brown eyes grew misty. I remember, dear, those were happy times. They were, said Aurora, her heart squeezing. We did all sorts of things without magic, didn't we? So I know that if we all work together now, we can find your wands. Flora was already working on a plan. We need to retrace our steps, she announced. When did we last use our wands? Fauna's face brightened. I used mine to make a cup of tea after our picnic, remember? Yes, and I used mine to fold up the picnic blanket, said Merryweather. We were sitting in our favorite spot by the stream. She hurried toward the woods, gathering her blue skirt as she ran. Aurora linked arms with Flora. Good thinking, she said to her fairy friend. When they reached the stream, Merriweather and Fauna were already searching the grassy banks. Hmm, 
We sat right about here, didn't we? said Merryweather. Aurora dropped to her knees to help them look. Just then, a squirrel dotted path, darted past, dragging a long, narrow twig. But when Aurora glanced up, she saw that it wasn't a twig at all. She gasped and pointed. Look! My wand! cried Merryweather. Stop, thief! She chased the squirrel toward the stream. When the squirrel leaped off the grassy bank, Merryweather did too. When the squirrel jumped onto the flat stone in the middle of the stream, Merryweather did too. But as the squirrel sprang to the other side, it dropped the wand. Merryweather plunged for it and... Plunk! Splash! She tumbled into the cool water. When the fairy stood up, she was dripping wet. Where's my wand? She cried, spinning in a circle. There! The wand was floating downstream, caught up in the current, as Merryweather splashed after it. Aurora raced along the bank. Aurora jumped into the ankle-deep water, reaching for the wand as it sailed past, but the current was too fast. The wand bobbed around a bend and then another before disappearing. <gasps> Aurora helped a soaking Merryweather onto the river bank before stepping out of the stream herself. Merryweather sputtered as she wrung out her wet cape. That b -b bothersome squirrel, why I ought to now, now, said Aurora. I'm sure the squirrel had a perfectly good reason for taking your wand. Yes, said Fauna. Maybe the squirrel needed your wand for something. Perhaps to build a nest, suggested Flora, pe peering up at the branches of a nearby tree. Aurora followed her gaze and spotted some twigs sticking out of a hole in the tree. There it is, she said. Well done, Flora. I'll bet your wands are in that nest. Merryweather hurried toward the tree, stepped on a nearby stump, and slid off her hat before sticking her head into the hollow or to the tree hollow. Good news, Fauna, she called in a muffled voice. I see your wand. Do you really? Fauna asked. Oh, let me see. She scrambled onto the stump next to Merryweather, but there was only enough room for each fairy to balance on one foot. Fauna looked into the tree hollow. That's it, she said, reaching inside. Just then, the squirrel scrambled down the tree trunk. It perched on a branch above Fauna and Merryweather and chattered as if scolding them. Fauna, Merryweather, Merryweather whispered, nudging the other fairy. Hurry up. I almost have it, Fauna said just a little farther. The squirrel continued its angry, angry chattering, scampering closer until it was nearly nose to nose with Merryweather. Oh, Merryweather cried as she leaned back. Her heel began to slip off the stump. I've got it, Fauna declared, pulling her wand out of the hole. At the very same moment, Merryweather flailed, losing her balance and grabbed onto Fauna's cape as she fell. Thump! The two fairies landed in a heap. Oh dear, Fauna said. She held up her wand, which was bent in two places. When she tried to cast a spell to fix it, the wand sputtered and smoked. I'm sorry, Fauna, Aurora said, her heart sinking. The squirrel chattered once more once more at the fairies and sat in front of the tree hollow as if to block them from re-entering. Merryweather huffed. I don't understand why that squirrel got so upset. Perhaps we shouldn't have touched its nest, Fauna said with a sigh. She tried to straighten out her wand, but it was no use. Fauna is right, said Aurora softly. We wouldn't want someone rattling around in our homes, would we? Flora shook her head. No, I suppose we wouldn't. Aurora helped the fairies to their feet and picked a few leaves and sticks out of Fauna's hair. But as she untangled the last twig, she realized it was no twig at all. It was the third wand. It must have gotten stuck in Fauna's hair while she was trying to pull her own wand from the nest, Aurora said, 
extending the wand to Flora. Before Flora could take it, the squirrel raced down the trunk of the tree, snatched the wand, and leaped to the forest floor. Then it disappeared into a thicket. Follow that squirrel, ordered Merryweather. She charged through the bushes. Don't scare it away, cried Fauna, following close behind. Aurora and the fairies raced after the squirrel, but the bushes were dense, and the squirrel could dart under and through them very quickly. Soon they could only follow the sound of the squirrel scampering over twigs and dried leaves. And then there was silence. We've lost the squirrel, Flora said with a sigh. We're going to need a new plan. She brushed some leaves off her cape and sat down on a log. Merryweather plucked down beside her, shivering in her still wet clothes. You're soaked, Merryweather. Let me brew you a cup of hot tea, said Fauna. She lifted her wand to cast a spell. Oh, dear, I forgot. She stared at her broken wand and sighed. <sighs> Don't lose hope, Aurora said to her friends. But as she glanced at the sun sinking low in the sky, her own hope faded. How would they find the squirrel after dusk? Hoo, hoo, came the familiar hoot of the owl. Aurora jumped and covered her heart with her hand. Oh, owl, you startled me. She gazed up at her feathered friend. Have you by chance seen a squirrel carrying a very, um, unusual twig? The owl gazed back with wise, round eyes. Who? Merryweather stood and put her hands on her hips. A bothersome thief, that's who. As if in response, the owl flapped its wings and took flight. Who? Who? I think it wants us to follow, said Aurora. She and the fairies tracked the owl through the forest, winding around trees and climbing over logs deeper and deeper into the woods. As dust began to fall, shadows crisscrossed their path. Aurora studied the dark forest, searching for the squirrel. As the wind picked up, branches creaked and groaned. Goosebumps prickled her skin. I hope we're going the right way, she whispered. Owl knows where we are, don't you, Owl? The owl swooped low, as if to reassure them that they were on the right path. But when the trail narrowed, Merryweather stopped and took a step backward. She uttered a single word. Thorns! Where? asked Aurora. As if in response, the clouds parted in the night sky. The moon cast a mysterious glow on a snarl of twisted branches covered in prickly thorns. Flora sucked in her breath. Those look like the work of... Who? called the owl overhead. Maleficent, spat Merryweather. Aurora's heart quickened. She had heard of the thicket of thorns, a trap Maleficent had sent from a Prince Philip. The evil fairy had tried to stop the prince from reaching Aurora and breaking the curse placed on her. As Aurora stared at the briar patch, the thorns seemed to twist and tangle before her very eyes. But that curse was broken, she whispered. Those thor thorns burned up in a blaze of fire, didn't they? Fauna patted Aurora's hand. That's right, dear, but her eyes started toward Flora. They did all burn up, didn't they? Flora didn't seem so sure. I think it's best if we avoid the briar patch, she said. Maleficent's dark magic may still linger in those thorns. They could be poisonous or hold a curse of their own. Aurora felt a chill down her spine. As a cloud drifted over the moon, the thorns took on a greenish glow. Was Flora right? Were those prickly branches filled with Maleficent's dark magic? She shivered and turned away. Then she heard something. Squeak! Chick, 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 chick. Squeak! Aurora whirled around and peered deep into the briar patch. She followed the sound tw toward the twisted branches at the top, where she spotted a trembling squirrel. The wand in its mouth shivered and shook. It's our squirrel, Aurora cried. With Flora's wand, said Merryweather. She lunged toward the thorny bushes, 
but Flora grabbed her cape from behind. We can't go in there, Flora said. You know the rules of magic. Good fairies can never set foot where evil magic exists. But the squirrel looks trapped, said Fauna. What if it has fallen under Maleficent's evil spell? We have to help the poor thing. And we must get Flora's wand, Meriwether said. What if we don't, we don't and someone else does? Someone as evil as Maleficent. Aurora shuddered at the thought. As silence fell over the forest, she took a deep breath. And suddenly, she knew what she had to do. You can't go into the thicket, she said to Meriwether. Nor can you, she told Fauna. You heard what Flora said, but maybe I can. No, all three fairies said at once. Their kindness gave Aurora the courage she needed. Yes, she said firmly. You saved me from Maleficent's curse once before. Now it's my turn to save you, to save your magic from falling into the wrong hands. But what if the thorns are a trap? asked Fauna, her voice tight with worry. Aurora swallowed hard and turned back toward the tangled branches. A green mist swirled around them as if beckoning her forward. Squeak, squeak, the squirrel cried out again. Aurora set her jaw. Bless you. The squirrel needs my help, she decided, and the good fairies do too. I'll be all right, she said, hoping it was true. Ever so carefully, she pushed her way through the thorny bushes. As she stepped into the green glow, she sensed a heavy fog settling over her. Her legs felt heavy, and her eyelids began to droop. Stay awake, she told herself. Keep going. Sharp thorns tangled in her hair and tore at her dress. But she kept her eyes straight ahead. With every step she took, the prickly branches seemed to wrap themselves more tightly around her. When she finally reached the squirrel, Aurora blew out her breath. The creature trembled on the branch. It's all right, said, said Aurora in a soothing voice. I'm here to help you. As she reached out her hand for the squirrel, it crawled toward her, but thorns suddenly sprouted from all around, blocking the squirrel from taking another step. The squirrel tried to push past the thorns, but the one in its mouth was too long to allow it through. So the squirrel let go. The wand slid from its mouth and clattered down through the spiny branches. Aurora's stomach dropped too. She gasped. Would she be able to find the wand? The squirrel raced down Aurora's arm and perched on her shoulder. And Fauna cheered. You saved the squirrel. But what about the wand? Mary Weather cried. As Aurora knelt, knelt to look for the wand, the green fog seemed to grow denser. A sudden wave of sleepiness settled over her. If only she could take a tiny nap. Her eyelids drifted slowly shut. Chuck, chuck, chuck. The squirrel chattered in her ear, waking her up. Do you see the wand? Flora called. Aurora peered seep sleepily through the gl glowing thicket. The wand rested on a bed of leaves and twigs. She reached carefully through the tangled branches, but the wand was too far away. I wish I could bend the branches, she said, or perhaps cut through them. When her sleeve caught on a thorn, her squirrel friend gnawed through the thorny branch, setting her free. Oh, what sharp teeth you have, said Aurora. Can you chew through a few more branches? Maybe together we could reach the wand. Chew! The squirrel hopped off her shoulder and began gnawing through the brambles. Aurora stretched her arm through them as far as she could. Finally, her fingertips touched the end of the wand. The squirrel squeaked and scampered back toward her as she gripped the wand firmly in her hand. Suddenly, she heard the crackle of twigs and branches. The thick, gnarly thorns began to wither and shrink, and the green mist faded to gray. Now that the good fairy's wand was back in safe hands, the evil that remains in the thorns vanished. Aurora breathed a sigh of relief as she stood. 
with her new friend perched on her shoulder, she made her way out of the thicket and presented Flora with her wand. Well done, dear girl, said Flora. Thank you. Oh, I do love happy endings, declared Fauna, wrapping Aurora in a tight hug. Tight hug. Even Merryweather dabbed at her eyes. Then she cleared her throat. All right now, back to business. We still have just one wand, not three. She pointed out Fauna's broken wand. Oh, said Fauna, of course. She waved her wand and with a shower of sparks repaired Fauna's. We'll find yours too, Merryweather, just as soon as we reach the stream. Thank you, said Fauna, admiring her shiny wand. It's as good as new. Why, I think it's even better. As the owl led them to the forest edge, Flora lit her path with her wand. Fauna admired her new and improved wand, hugging it to her heart. Merryweather kept her eyes peeled for the stream, and Aurora breathed in the night air, feeling very much awake. When they reached the stream, Flora sent a glittering trail of magic across the water. It returned moments later, carrying something in its midst. My wand, called, cried Merryweather. The squirrel on Aurora's shoulder squeaked and reached for the wand as it passed by. Oh, no, you don't, Merryweather scolded. She grabbed her wand just in time. Aurora laughed. <laughs> time to get home, she told the squirrel, lifting it toward the hole in the tree. It chattered a sweet goodbye before darting into its nest. Out of the corner of her eye, Aurora saw Merryweather cast a quick spell. A flurry of soft feathers swirled through the air, straight into the squirrel's nest. What are the feathers for? asked Fauna. Merryweather shrugged. Perhaps if its nest is a little more comfortable, that sneaky squirrel won't try to steal our wands again. Merryweather, Aurora whispered, you do care about the squirrel after all. <laughs> said the fairy. With a wave of her wand, she sprouted wings and fluttered off the ground, smiling just a little. I'm so pleased that we found all three wands, said Fauna, as they started down the trail. We did, said Aurora, and all we needed was your special strengths. Our special strengths, asked Flora. Why, yes, said Aurora. Flora, you're very wise. You came up with a plan for finding the wands. All you, you needed to do was retrace your steps. Flora's cheeks turned pink. And Merryweather, Aurora cr continued, you're very brave. If you hadn't chased that squirrel, we never would have found its nest. Merryweather's mouth twitched into a smile. And Fauna, said Aurora, you're so kind. If you hadn't been determined to help the squirrel, we never would have retrieved the last one. You spread kindness everywhere you go. Fauna dabbed at her eyes. Well, I do try, dear. So you see, said Aurora, we didn't need magic to find the wands. All we needed was Flora's wisdom, Merryweather's courage, and Fauna's kindness. Flora flitted back toward her and smiled. Someone else showed great wisdom, courage, and kindness tonight, too. Woo! Caught called the owl overhead. You, all three fairies said to Aurora. Aurora's cheeks bl flushed with pride and happiness. Well, I did have some help from my forest friends. She looked back at the, at the squirrel's nest and waved at the owl above. For just a moment, she thought she saw a flicker of green in the bushes nearby, but it was only a firefly. Maleficent's dark magic is gone, she reminded herself. I'm safe now, and the fairies are too. She turned to follow the, green, the three good fairies who dipped and darted along the trail ahead of her, leading the way home. Wasn't that an amazing story of Aurora and how she showed all three traits of kindness, courage, and wisdom? As you all know, Aurora is loving, joyful, good-natured, friendly, graceful, imaginative, and hopeful. 
Her dream is to be free to explore life's possibilities. And her heroic moment, never giving up on her belief that dreams really do come true. Her sidekicks, of course, are her three fairy aunts, Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather. And a famous quote from her, if you dream a thing more than once, it's sure to come true. Now I have a question for you. What are your special strengths?